Now, one thing that you may, uh, a few other additions to this topic. First of all, let's go back and hit these, categorize these, uh, fill in these categories, populate these categories. Perfect consonances, perfect unison, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, perfect octave. Imperfect consonances, major and minor thirds, oh, sorry. Going too far over again. So let me erase a bunch of this. So my perfect consonants is perfect unison, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, perfect octave. My imperfect consonants is major and minor thirds, major and minor sixths. My dissonances. Major and minor seconds, major and minor sevenths, and all intervals that are either diminished or augmented are considered to be dissonances. I can take any of those. We already saw just two, uh, just one of each, just the augmented fourth, the diminished fifth. But any of those other intervals, if I take a perfect fifth, if I take a perfect interval and I make it smaller or larger, it's always going to create a diminished or augmented interval. So for example, if I take my octave, there's my perfect octave. If I shrink it by one, this is now a diminished octave. If I expand it by one, this is now an augmented octave. Any perfect interval gets smaller, it's diminished, uh, it gets bigger, it's augmented. You do that twice, doubly augmented, doubly diminished. This is now a doubly augmented octave. I started with this, I augmented it once, I augmented it twice. It sounds like an octave plus a major second, but since both of those notes are spelled as C's, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it is a kind of an octave. What kind? A doubly augmented octave. Similarly, any kind of interval that's naturally major or minor, for example, that's a major sixth, I can expand it out and make it into an augmented sixth, a doubly augmented sixth, or now I've made it into a minor sixth, and if I contract it still further, it's now a diminished sixth. So making, so perfect intervals, it's just perfect, make it bigger augmented, make it smaller diminished. Major, minor, one major, of course, is larger than minor, make it bigger, augmented, make it smaller, diminished. The other thing to point out is just to show you a little bit more, you should, again, without a clef, if you just want to spot intervals, that is what a fourth looks like. About that distance, always line and space. A fifth, any, as with any odd numbered intervals, two spaces, two lines. Here, let me raise things a little bit so I've got a little bit more room. Some kind of, a, so without a clef, without a clef up there, I don't know the qualities of these intervals, but I can just put them up here, and if I skip a space and it's two spaces, it's a fifth. If I skip a line from two lines, it's a, it's a fifth. The sixth, of course, one larger than that, it's even numbered interval, so it's line and space. The seventh, two lines, the octave. And you should get to the point, if you're not already there, where you can just, even without a clef, you can just glance at two notes, whether they're written uh, as simultaneities or whether they're written sequentially, and you can just immediately name the interval. I just realized, something that I should have said at the very beginning, although it crept into one of the other lessons. Uh, Intervals, can come, intervals are about pitch relationships, and they can come in two forms. When intervals are successive, like this, we call those melodic intervals because you only get one, at a one note as a, at a time, as in a melody. When you get two notes sounding at the same time, as in a harmony, you call those harmonic intervals. So, I think that that was just about everything I wanted to tell you about intervals, but there's just one other funny thing that I want to point out to you. And that is that this business of how we 
uh, saying what the size of the interval is, is very strange. And it gives rise to something I call math for musicians. So suppose, again, I'm not going to worry about a clef. I don't care what, uh, what, exact, what the qualities are. But this is a third, and that's a third. And now if we go directly from one note to the next, that's a fifth. Three plus three equals five. Now suppose we take our fifth and stick another third on top. Five plus three equals seven. But if we did it all in steps, three plus three plus three equals seven. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'd written sums like that in elementary school or at any other point in my education, I think I would have run into some problems. And yet this is what we do all the time as musicians. This is simply the way our system works. We'll talk about why this is in class, but uh, as a fun kind of brain teaser, why don't you see if you can't figure out what is it that's wrong, wrong anyway, from a mathematical standpoint with the way that we talk about intervals? What is it that leads to this funny problem of math for musicians? <laughs>